I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about sweet peas. Everything you need to know about sweet peas. How to grow them from starts, how to grow them from seed, what time to plant them because that's super important, all the different kinds, how to fertilize, treat them for insects, all that kind of stuff. They are so exciting when you get them like this. This is like the promise of spring. We know spring is just right around the corner. You can almost smell them, can't you? So the first thing I want to tell you about is the different types of sweet peas. These are the annual sweet peas that grow nice and big and tall on a trellis and when you're picking out your seed or your starts, understanding what the names mean will help you pick out what you want. The most common one that you see anymore is called Spencer. Spencer is the really, really frilly, ruffly, lacy kind of flower. They're big flowers and they have nice long stems so they're really great for cutting. The other one that you see a lot is Grandiflora. Grandiflora tends to be a smaller flower but they smell better so if you're looking for that sweet pea smell all of them will have a nice beautiful smell but those grandiflora smell even better and if you're living somewhere coastal like we are here in Southern California there are early sweet peas that are really great because you can get your flowers even earlier they could even be flowering in January and February right away so those are the three different typical types that you see so understanding what those mean will help you pick and know what you're growing in your garden the first thing I want to talk about is planting from seed. So depending on where you are in the US, that's going to determine when you're going to plant from seed. So if you're in zone seven or lower, you really have to plant outside after the fear of the last frost is over. So here in Southern California, we don't actually really have to deal with that. So it really changes things for us a lot. So here in Southern California, you want to plant anywhere from September to January, depending on the variety. If you're starting the early type for varieties you want to start earlier in the season and you might actually have flowers by January or February so when you're planting from seed there's a lot of different ideas about how to do it things have really changed in the seed world so the whole idea of having to soak your seeds overnight or even nick them with a razor blade or use sandpaper is kind of out the window I find I don't have to do that at all anymore in fact I have better germination rates when I don't do that I don't soak them or do anything and I can sow them directly directly in the ground or in pots. So if I want to get an earlier start, I'll do it in pots where I can keep them warmer and kind of control it. But most of the time I actually direct sow right into the soil, right into my garden, and it works really, really well. So when putting them in the soil, you want to put them about a half of an inch to a quarter of an inch down into the soil. And I like to plant two right next to each other. So regardless if I'm doing it in a pot or doing it in the ground, I plant them pretty much the same way. They're such beautiful, little, gorgeous, perfectly round seeds. Uh, I'm such a garden nerd and I love seeing stuff like this. It's just so exciting because it's such an amazing promise of something to come in the future. So you want to push these into nice, soft, fertile soil. If I'm starting them in pots, I like to use the Malibu potting mix. Uh, and you wanna put two of them right in there, maybe even three, and you're just gonna push those in about a quarter of an inch to an inch. If you're not good at eyeballing it, always use uh, a ruler so that way you know that you're doing right. And you're gonna pack that on top, not too tight, leave that nice and soft, and then give it a good watering. If you're planting your sweet peas from transplants, ones that you bought in the nursery or the ones that you started from seed, January and February is the best time to do it. You want to set out each transplant about six to eight inches apart from each other and you need to make sure that you're putting them in an area where they can climb up because sweet peas get to be about six to eight feet tall and having some kind of structural support is super important. They're not going to look pretty sprawled all over the ground, you won't get to see the flowers and they'll really get ruined. So having some kind of trellis system like this, I love doing them in pots and having them on these beautiful uh, trellises like this. Chain link fences work, uh, just regular flat trellises work as well, but make sure you have a really good support system for them to grow up. That way you can enjoy the beauty of it and cutting them is so much easier. Now that you have your sweet peas planted either in the ground or in pots, let's talk about fertilizing. When I first transplant mine into the ground or into a container, I like to use the all-purpose down-to-earth fertilizer. This is a nice granular fertilizer. I put a little bit in and around the hole when I first plant them. That way they instantly have some fertilizer to get as you water them and as we get the spring rains. Then I like to switch over to these ones that you actually mix with water. The concentration on these are a little bit higher 
higher. This one is a 16, 16, 16, so I like to start that in the very beginning. And as soon as I see those buds cracking, which is like February, March, typically early March, I switch over to the bloom formula. I want to get as many flowers as possible so I can give them to all of my friends and bring them in the house. This one is really great. You see that middle number is a lot higher, so that's really going to force a lot of flowers out in your garden. There are a few things in the garden that like sweet peas just as much as we do, and that's things like aphids, slugs, and snails. So to help combat those problems, as soon as you see them, start treating them. If you know you have slugs and snails, I would start treating before you even see evidence of damage because they can work really, really fast. Sluggo is a really great organic product that you can use in the garden and it's pet safe as well. So as soon as you plant them, if you know you typically have problems with slugs and snails, sprinkle this down around so they go for this and not for your sweet peas because they work super fast and they can demolish a plant within a day. So you can plant it in the ground, come out the next day and it's gone. On. So if that happens, you know you have this problem, so make sure you put down this just to start. If you start seeing aphids on your plants, and they're little green tiny things, they usually like to go around the buds, so you typically see them when the plants are a little bit older and have buds on them, that's when you should start using something like this insecticidal soap. This one's my all-time favorite because it's really, really gentle on the plants. It also has seaweed extract in it, which is a good boost for the plants as well, because if they have something like aphids on them, chances are they're kind of stressed out a little bit so this will help get rid of the aphids and it will help give them a little extra boost that they might be needing. Sweet peas come in a huge array of colors so there is definitely a color that will fit into your garden. It's really fun and mixing and matching colors thinking about bouquets that you might want to cut and bring into your house. It's great to be able to give to neighbors. The more you cut your sweet peas, the happier they're gonna be. You don't wanna let them go to seed on the vine. So if you keep cutting them, you're gonna keep getting more and more flowers. Here at Rogers Gardens, we actually have about 20 different seed varieties imported from England and contract grown just for us. They're such beautiful colors and they're things that you're not gonna find anywhere else. Most of them come in these little four inch pots like this, but you can also get sweet peas in six packs as well. And don't get, forget, growing from seed is actually really super easy so if you haven't started doing it try it and if you've grown sweet peas before definitely come and check out the really beautiful English varieties we sell here at Rogers make sure you check out our YouTube page we have tons of videos with all kinds of fun tips and tricks and all kinds of information if you've got a topic you have a question about it I guarantee we have a video about it also make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Facebook that way we can keep you up to date about all the new things that come in you'll know about all the new varieties of sweet peas we get in when we get them and all the other things that we have going on here at Rogers Gardens you will be the first to know about it so thank you so much for watching this be safe, be well, and happy gardening.